We're going to shift gears for the next few days until the CPI report on 11.14 by looking at the NASDAQ 100 Technology Index Equal Weighted q -Tech. This is the companion ETF to the Equal Weighted NDXT that we look at sometimes. So now we're looking at the ETF and we'll start off in its daily cloud chart and we see that it's still flying high above the channel 3 high so it's been above for five days and let's see what happens today but that's really stretching it it did make it above its top of the cloud for current price here and the qualified and confirmed propulsion momentum up for 100% printed here. And that makes the 100% qualified and confirmed propulsion exhaustion up level at 178.75. And the lagging line 26 bars back reflecting current price did make it above it's top of the cloud to the disqualified by TDST major resistance. So that's an important level there, about 151. And for right now, the Bollinger Band upper band and the upper Stark band using 2.0 ATR now are pretty much running together and all of this is very similar to the S&P 500 except for the cloud action where S&P 500 is stuck in the cloud and the ongoing supply lines look very similar to the S&P 500 and you can see that it would require a open above it for today wherever that level is it isn't that far away it needs to open above it wherever that's at and close above it to get this qualified. And D-Wave for Q-Tech is on the D-Wave up wave 2 and the D-Wave down wave 5 and the D-Wave down wave 4 and up 1 have printed here but it's on those other D-Wave levels 2 and 5 and the combo and sequential cell setup 7 count is very similar to the S&P 500 so it would require a close below 145.95 to get the price flip to the buy setup count 1 if not the cell setup count prints an 8 for end of day today and it's a pretty easy beat for Friday if it does print the 8, then all it has to do is stay above 145.50 for end of day on Friday, and we get the cell set up 9 end count. And that will put the floor down here at this low of bar 1, 137.06 for the cell TDST level. And the only thing pending to the downside would be this combo by countdown 9. And these could be negated along with this sequential. Possibly this one could get negated if we print the 9 end count for QTEC. Unlike the S&P 500, the conversion line is still well below the baseline, but the baseline is going flat like the S&P 500, so it's got quite a gap between the two where the S&P 500 is just about to have a crossover of the conversion line above the baseline. And QTEC's relative retracement up one has been qualified and confirmed also. So the next level is this relative retracement up to 150.56. And that's right near the TDST line for disqualified by TDST 150.74. It makes that even 
a more important level as that disqualified up to for relative retracement will be resistance to so that's major resistance at 151 and the QQE fast is above its QQE slow very similar to the S&P 500 directional movement index same thing DMI plus above DMI minus and the ADX is above 20 but needs to swing around and point up and stay above 20 and then we know we're in a strong directional movement to the upside the ATM trigger fast up is above its overbought line but the slow trigger up is not there yet to meet it so that's a bit different than the S&P 500 where the slow is above the overbought and has met the fast trigger up there. REIDM1 and ROCK are very similar to the S&P 500. The QTech DM1 has yet to get above the overbought. Rock is above the overbought and REI is pointed down on this strong uptrend to seek and maybe find neutral zero. And here's the NDXT, same as the QTech. This is the index level. We're looking at the complex head and shoulders pattern. I'm going to zoom into this area now. And zoomed in a little bit closer, we can see that price for the NDXT and QTech has been nailing this high from back here, this purple line here, and has bounced off of it just like the S&P 500, but the S&P 500 doesn't have this line here. So the 10% is the rule for measurement from the top of the head to the breakout under the shoulder here on the outer part of the complex head and shoulders pattern but it got stopped there and has nailed this downtrend line which looks very similar to the ongoing supply line now we'll zoom in a little closer so that level at this downtrend line for the NDXT is 81.42, but it's very similar to that QTEC ongoing supply line. So the analysis here with QTEC and NDXT is if it breaks above this downtrend line and ongoing supply line in QTEC and stays above it and starts moving up in a sustained manner for a couple of days three days possibly but let's see what happens for a couple of days and then this complex head and shoulders pattern is negated if that happens if not and maybe after one or two days we get a whipsaw after the CPI report and head down I'm still calling this complex head and shoulders pattern valid and then we'll start looking at this 200 simple moving average here and the 200 EMA maybe back to that high purple line here and if it breaks all that then we have this uptrend line from the one-sided diamond pattern that it broke out a long time ago from and then if that happens and breaks down through that, then we have the 10% rule somewhere in this no man's land for a buying zone here.